If you are in the market for an entry-level luxury car and don't really want to go with the predictable styling of the Germans, then the Volvo S60 is one of the best options out there. But does the S60 have the go to match its show? We'll find out on the show today. Well, in terms of boot capacity, the Volvo S60 is slightly behind its rivals. It offers you a boot of about 380 litres, which is much lower than the one on the Mercedes C-Class as well as the BMW 3 Series, which are both roughly about 460 odd litres. And what really uh, mars the boot capacity even further is the fact that Volvo have placed the spare wheel here. Now, with this spare wheel in place, it's only about 339 litres or so. And uh, it's pretty average for uh, this type of car. On the plus side though, the boot still isn't very high and what that means if you have a heavy object to load, it should not really put too much of a stress on your back and uh, there's minimal intrusion from the suspension into the luggage area. And to make that boot capacity better, what you can do is uh, drop the backrest of the back seat down and that can be done by simply clicking on the button over here. Well, as you can see with the rear seats dropped down, you get a nice and flat area to load your longer objects and that means that practicality on the S60 is not a big issue. But of course, uh, the best way to use these seats is to uh, pop the backrest back and uh, get into them and talk about the comfort and luxury over here. Well, once you get inside the back seat of the S60, you really realize what a nice and comfortable place it is to be in. And these seats, I have to say, are easily the best in this segment in terms of sheer comfort as well as the overall cushioning. Well, even though the S60 has that slightly sloping roofline at the back, inside it does not really affect uh, headroom. I'm 5'10 and uh, even then I've got a decent amount of headroom over here. And uh, knee room is pretty generous as well. And I've also got place below the front seats where I can stretch my uh, feet at. So overall, in terms of comfort, one of the better cars in this segment. Well, on the downside, there's a bit of a hump over here in the floor panel. But that said, it's not as high or as wide as some of its rivals. And what that means is that whoever's going to sit here in the middle seats will have a decent place to stretch his feet like I am. And uh, because the seats are excellent in terms of cushioning as well as the backrest angle, all three occupants at the back should have a comfortable time. Well, to improve uh, comfort further, the S60 also comes with AC vents which are positioned over here in the pillars. Well, if you are someone who uses a smartphone and needs to charge it every couple of hours, you also have a 12-volt socket over here at the back to uh, keep yourself always on the go. Well, just like the back seat of this car, even the front seats offer excellent cushioning as well as support. And uh, the side bolstering uh, in these seats is uh, very good as well. Well, uh, the Volvo seats are easily the best in its segment for sheer comfort as well as cushioning and even the lumbar support as well as under thigh support is exceptional on this car well the quality of materials used inside the s60 is at par with all its rivals and is really as good as its german rivals which are of course uh, its main threat but uh, in terms of sheer design some may not really like uh, the interiors they don't really feel as special as uh, the mercedes c-class does nor uh, as uh, well laid out as the ones on the audi a4. Unlike Mercedes, BMW and Audi which offer you that swivel wheel to control most of the functions on the menu, this car uh, doesn't have that function. It uses a lot of buttons on the center console over here and that can get a little annoying and a little uh, irritating to use for initial users but once you get the hang of it, it's really a breezy fare to operate this dashboard. Well, the dashboard is slightly tilted towards the driver and that makes it a very appealing car uh, for the driver and there's also one big AC vent over here for the driver and uh, that sets the S60 apart in terms of the design language. It does have a certain Scandinavian coolness about itself. For instance, you can change the color as well as the theme of the gauges by clicking on this button here, depending on the mood you're in. For instance, you can choose from economy, elegance, as well as performance to change the theme as well as the color of the gauges. Well, talking about practicality and the useful cubby spaces inside the cabin, let's do it by looking at a photo montage, shall we? Well, so here I am now driving the uh, Volvo S60, which comes with two engine options. Both are diesels. There's a 2-liter uh, diesel as well as a 2.5 diesel, which we are driving today. Uh, this one is, of course, called the D5, and it develops about 214 bhp and about 440 nm of torque, uh, both of which are pretty fair considering uh, its rivals in this segment. 
But where this engine really stands out is in the fact that it's a pretty responsive engine and that coupled with its 8-speed automatic gearbox makes the S60 one of the more driver-friendly cars in the city. While the other area where the S60 really impresses is in the steering department. It's a very communicative steering wheel. It's also a very quick steering wheel and what that means is that if you are in a twisty hilly section or you enjoy uh, going onto the track once in a while then this car will truly reward you. Well uh, the suspension is uh, pretty firm and that makes it uh, one of the better cars for highway cruising and it feels very planted and very stable at higher speeds even when you push it uh, in excess of 150 kph the Volvo S60 feels really planted. Well the only downside of that uh, firm suspension is the fact that when you are driving on uh, a badly patched work road you can feel uncomfortable and a lot of bumps will transmit into the cabin. Well, the 8-speed automatic gearbox on this car is uh, effortless and it's really quick to respond to uh, your inputs as well. And you can, of course, uh, use it manually by using these uh, pedal shifters over here at the back of the steering wheel. It's a really quick gearbox, as I just mentioned, both in terms of the upshifts as well as the downshifts. Well, what that 8-speed automatic gearbox does is that really gives this engine a lot of flexibility. So if you are doing speeds in excess of 110, 120 kph on the highway, the engine is spinning at a relatively low 1700 or 1800 RPM and that makes the cabin a very calm and quiet place to be in. Well, with those massive tyres on the outside and those reassuring brakes, this is a great car for uh, keener drivers and also because the steering wheel is so communicative, it's a good car uh, and at par with most of its rivals in this segment in terms of driver involvement. Well, the S60 offers a stylish exterior, a classy interior and comfortable seats. That, along with its safety, features and technology, makes it a viable alternative to its established German rivals. Well, before you decide to ride a check for this car, you can also check out our review of the Mercedes C-Class by clicking on the link over here and also the BMW 3 Series by clicking on this link below. It's bye for now and hope to see you soon.